My name's Don Powell. Um, I'm here. We're going to talk about the State Seal Civic Engagement. I got a plethora of resources. I'm going to start and treat us kind of all like we're at the very beginning stages here in a minute and really give us an opportunity to uh, kind of uh, see where we're at and explore. I've got a whole host of things for you and I uh, got some great stuff if you can stick around to the end, um, uh, including a uh, uh, an amazing opportunity that uh, RCOE has partnered with UCR to kind of put together. Um, while we're going ahead and getting started, I'm going to launch a poll to kind of see who's in the room. And uh, so that way I can kind of get an idea as to who's who. While we're doing that, if you want, you can take a look at our, our mood meter and drop your mood into the chat. Uh, what I like about this mood is you can kind of go up and down the, the energy level. You can rate your energy on a level of one to 10. And then you can rate your pleasantness on a, on a level of one to 10. And then boom, it'll find a word for you. And uh, you can look around to the surrounding words. Um, I know earlier when I was like uh, showing this off because I thought it was cool. I was like, oh, look, I'm at like a, uh, I think I said I was at like a six. And uh, uh, a six, um, I think it was a six and a six. And I was like, hey, ah, nope. I was at like a six and a seven and I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm hopeful. And I was like, nah, but I, I want to be playful. So you can drop that in too, obviously. All right. We got, uh, we're going to share the poll results so we can, everybody can kind of see who's in the room. We got an elementary teacher, some middle school teachers, some high school teachers. Uh, they're winning out. We got some site administrators, some district administrators, a TOSA, a counselor, and other. And that's awesome. I think that's fantastic because we've got a wide variety of people in the room. And honestly, it's going to take a wide variety of people to make this happen and to make it happen well. So thank you for your time and, and taking the time to come hang out with me today. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, we're going to have a little something for everybody. Um, with that being said... Uh, let's check the chat and see how people are doing. Cause I think it's a really important idea to kind of check in, see where we're at, all that fun stuff. Drained, focused, spent. Okay. All right. Optimistic, easygoing. Okay. We're going to share everything after the meeting. Uh, in fact, we're going to share everything during the meeting. Uh, Will, uh, Grace is going to drop some links if she hasn't already started dropping links into the chat. So today's slide presentation, you can go ahead and drop that now. So you're going to have all of the slides and then you're also going to have um, a host of resources. And I mean, a host, probably more than you know what to do with. Um, definitely more than you can shake a stick. Um, optimistic, chill, fulfilled, lively. Okay, nice. So we've got all, we're all over the map. Busy, 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 upbeat. I like it. All right, so the goal today is to not slide backwards, either uh, have to, uh, either move forward or at least stay the same. That's my goal for you, for us, and uh, obviously to get us some resources. Uh, thank you, Andri Adriana. I really appreciate it. That's what we're working to do here. So, all right, now let's move on. So here's our agenda today. We're going to get into a quick little preamble. Um, and talk about why civics. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with that. We're going to get into a little bit of the legalese behind this, who can earn a seal, the criteria for earning a seal. We're going to talk about some resources around that criteria. We're going to throw you guys into break rooms um, so that you can kind of hear and reflect off of all of the stuff that we've talked about, some other quick considerations, some additional resources, and it's that additional resources piece that you're going to want to hang out for. Um, it's going to, I think it's going to light some fires. Um, and then obviously an evaluation. If you like today's presentation, my name is Don Powell. If you don't like today's presentation, my name is Michael Rowe. I don't know if you guys know him, but he also works at RCOE. He's a buddy of mine. I mean, he's not a buddy. I'm, well, it depends on if you like me or not. Um, but Michael Rowe is a good guy. So, but if you don't like me, I am definitely him. So preamble, why sitting are we here? What, what, is, what is going on here? So Grace is now going to be tasked with dropping a whole host of links into the chat. And without getting, without getting bogged down into the details, um, I think what really needs to be said here is that civics and the state seal of civic engagement is not one more thing. To me, it's the thing. 
You know, we've got all these problems in education right now. We've got all these problems in society right now. And I think we're talking about students, a lack of student engagement. We're talking about our students not being interested. And all of a sudden we can change that with a conversation and with actions around civics. Because all of a sudden we're making school more relevant. We're talking about problems. We're talking about things that kids care about. And we're engaging with our communities to build better communities. Um, these resources, they talk about, so the first one I would recommend if you're, if you're, if you don't know, um, the guidebook on six proven practices for effective civic learning is a great place to get started. Um, if you're not fully on board or if you're not really sure about where we're at, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here because you obviously are given an hour of your time to come find out about the state seal and you're interested or invested in civic engagement. So this is really more for getting some of those other people on board or bringing in more players to the picture. So um, we've got Civics Now, which is a great, uh, great organization right now. They're trying to prove, uh, push through some uh, amazing civics legislation through Congress. Um, through our National Congress, and then they, they put out this white paper about the Republic still at risk and civics is part of the solution. Uh, CDE's got some great resources to support civic engagement. And then there's the civic mission of schools um, and uh, revitalizing K-12. So these are just all some great articles that talk about why civics. And, um, and I really think, I, I personally believe that this is the answer. It's wrapped up in a lot of different things that are coming out right now in terms of UDL and culture responsive. This is what this is, you know? It is UDL, it is culturally responsive. And uh, if you wanna talk more with me about that, I'd be happy to, but I don't wanna spend a whole bunch of times telling you stuff that I believe you already believe to be the case. Um, and certainly wanna make sure that I give you some access to some tools so that you can see that. Anyway, so here's some legalese that Grace is going to drop into. In 2017, AB, two, uh, AB 24 got signed into law, which basically instructed the CDE to develop a set of criteria to award students of demonstrated excellence in civic education. They basically formed a committee to create uh, the state seal of civic education and what the criteria were going to be for earning a seal. A group of people met, policymakers, teachers, um, they had a wide variety, a wide swath of people in the room for that conversation. And, um, and so we're gonna dive into what that looks like, but AB 24 becomes ed code, which is uh, ed code 5147. This is for my district people so that they can start quoting stuff, 51470. And then um, it's to encourage and create pathways for pupils in elementary and secondary schools to become civically engaged in democratic government institutions at the local, state, and national levels. So the goal here is not just high school, it's elementary, middle, high school, um, with the seal being awarded at the high school level. So who can earn a seal? Um, students in California public schools, direct funded charter school, the juvenile justice system, and or alternative school settings up through grade 12. And I think this gets to the heart of what I was trying to, what I, what I had said earlier about it being the answer, you know, the goal here is accessibility for all, you know, to make it so that everyone has an opportunity to earn a seal. Um, you know, our students in the juvenile justice system, uh, you wanna find out what's wrong with something, talk to the people that are experiencing or that are downtrodden or that, are, that have been left out, you know. Go to your alt ed skites, go to your, talk to your kids that are failing. You wanna find out what's wrong with you or with, with your school, that's, you go to those places and they will be very quick to tell you everything that's wrong or what's going on there and ways that you, you, we have disenfranchised people. I'm not saying you in particular, that, that was a bad, you know, we're going to call that up to. Oh my God, this guy. All right. So that's the idea. Yeah. I told you, Adriana, we were going to throw you more resources than you could shake a stick at. All right. So, um, the, um, students can earn a seal in either grades 11 or grades 12. And so if you earn it in grade 11, the hope is, is that you're able to stick it that way it can uh, be a feather in your cap when you're applying into colleges and universities. And uh, if not for grade 12, so that it can be affixed to your high school diploma. So that's the hope. And then even though there's that one state seal that gets awarded, the hope is, is that our districts and schools will find a way to recognize students engaging civically in middle and in elementary school. And so that this can be a great uh, 
kind of continuum that we build from. Okay. Right. Recognizing that civic engagement looks different from community to community. Our, our communities have different problems, you know, whether you're in Temecula um, uh, or whether you're in Blythe, you know, I mean, Riverside County itself is massive in size, massive in population. The only county bigger than us is the county next door in San Bernardino. And that's just because they got more desert, right? Um, but in terms of population, we're where it's at. In terms of, uh, of size, we're where it's at. And so we got to recognize that what works at, you know, Palo Verde High School is going to be different than what works at Alta Loma High School, which is going to be different than what works um, down at Temecula Valley High School. Uh, LEAs, and we've got districts that vary in size and sequence here. You know, our Desert Center, I think, has 20, 28 students. Um, and then we have CNUSD, which is, uh, uh, I think, um, over 100,000 or something, uh, like tons. So, I mean, we've got very small to very large. And so, as a result, we're hoping that our LEAs are able to work with local and statewide organizations that you're able to look with inside of your community to develop local criteria and design and implement engagement activities and pathways that reflect community interests, needs, and resources. So what do you have available? What can you do? What can your students do? You know, see a need, fill a need. I know I've been talking at you a lot. I'm going to talk at you a lot more over the next 10 minutes, and then I'm going to give you some opportunities to, to kind of break all of this down. I apologize um, for that. If you've been with me before, you know that that's not typically how I run things. I don't like to hear myself talk, um, although my kids might beg to differ. So the statewide criteria for earning a sale, these are the five different criteria. I ripped this straight off of the R R USD civics page. Carolyn Powers, if you're around, uh, I thank you for letting me steal this from you um, without your permission, but I think with your permission. <laughs> if you're from RUSD, know that I stole this right off of your guys' website. Take some pride in that. That's awesome. Um, but the idea is to be engaged in academic work in a productive way, understanding democracy, participating in civic engagement, some self-reflecting, and exhibiting character traits. I'm going to dive into these five things, throw some resources at you, and then allow you guys some time to kind of decompress all of this and break all of this stuff down and kind of come back, okay? So criteria one talks about being engaged in academic work in a productive way. And so what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, so your districts are able to come up with their own requirements in doing that, though, it's important that we don't just sit there and say you need a 2.0, because if you say that everybody or you need a 3.0, because all of a sudden you've disenfranchised a whole host of students and a whole host of students who have probably already been disenfranchised in a different way and could strongly benefit from engaging civically. You know, because if you like I said, if you want to know what's wrong with something, talk to the people who are being wrong or who have been left out or who have been cast aside. They know what's wrong, you know. So. In doing this, we need to talk about how that works for our ELs, for our homeless, for our foster youth, for our incarcerated, for those in internal, our alternative school settings. We need to talk about how that works for students with IEPs. Um, criteria two says, demonstrate a competent understanding of the US and California constitutions, functions and governance of local governments, tribal government structures and organizations, the role of the citizen in a constitutional democracy and democratic principles, concepts and processes. That is dense. And then you go down here. Oh, and by the way, all, so these slides that are, that we're in and are gonna keep coming for the five criteria come directly from the CDE State Seal of Civic Engagement. I think um, Grace has already dropped that link into the chat. Um, and so that's why you're seeing a lot of informationally dense text right here, because this is all, the criteria is just the small bullet point up top, but these are all the different things that they talk about looking at and how that can look into. And so when you dive into what the state is talking about with regards to this, it's basically completing the high school level of sequence courses for grades 10, 11, and 12. So US history, government, uh, and world history. Now, it talks about completing those things with a passing grade. Well, what is a passing grade? 
And that gets into those kinds of conversations. So these three classes should be completed with a passing grade, whatever that means. And LEAs, so districts and schools can determine what that looks like. They also talk about ways, other ways of being able to fulfill this. Maybe you have a, uh, a content benchmark or a civic assessment or something like that you can demonstrate your competent understanding of these things in a different way. And those are all ideas, avenues to consider. LEAs are, are encouraged. Um, student participation in local meetings at all three branches. So going to a school board meeting, maybe going to a city council meeting, maybe going to the courts, um, getting involved in, in, in local governance. Um, integration of experiential learning opportunities into these courses, simulations, um, all things to think about. And again, encouraging, possibly allowing for that grade 11 to be able, grade 11 students to be able to fulfill these requirements so that they could get that seal. Now that would take some work because your grade 11, um, you need to pass that government class as a part, a part of that, or at least demonstrate that competency beforehand. So that is work that would need to get discussed and figured out. Criteria three, participate in one or more informed civic engagements and projects that address real world problems and require students to identify and inquire into civic needs or problems, consider varied responses, take actions and reflect on those efforts. Um, basically engage in a civic research project, you know, in a, in a, in a civic action project. Does that mean community service? It, it could, if that's the way you, you run that, I think what the hope was is that it would be richer than that. You know, a service learning project where kids are getting engaged and they're choosing, uh, finding ways to choose and define problems in their own communities, investigate root causes and solutions, um, work with or become part of influencing institutional policies um, and working in a way that they're not just doing 10 hours of community service at the local library, but are engaged significantly as evidence either by duration, depth, or impact. You know, you can participate in something and have a deep impact on it without it taking a significant amount of time, depending upon what you're bringing to the table. You know, um, for example, um, if you got into a foster youth conversation and you hosted a foster youth panel at your school, your teachers or people would take a lot from that experience because a lot of people don't have that understanding. And by participating in that, you would open yourself up to, to sharing a lot of rich information um, for that. So the impact would be great, even though the time commitment on something like that might not have been as significant. These are all things to weigh. It's not Sorry that I didn't just give you like a cookie cutter, cut and paste kind of a thing, but I think it's important because that's what we're dealing with within our communities. Our communities are all different. You know, our schools are different. Our classrooms are different. So criteria three, you, these can be done individually with classmates or in partnership with community members and organizations. The hope is, is that we're able to leverage our, our partnerships within our community to go ahead and to continue this work and to make ongoing civic engagement process projects that can develop over time. Um, informing civic engagement activities can take a lot of different forms, new initiatives or projects, and um, improve upon pre-existing already there opportunities. How can we make things better? You know, because that's that's always our goal, right? How can we do this better? How can we be better teachers? How can we be better educators? How can we be a better school? Criteria four, demonstrate civic knowledge, skills, and dispositions through self-reflection. So criteria, so it's like criteria one and two are all about, you know, grades and, and engaging in the work, right? And, and doing schoolwork. Criteria three is like this giant civic engagement project. Criteria four ties with criteria three because it's all about self-reflection. And what does that self-reflection look like and the different forms that that self-reflection can take? Um, and uh, Jose just asked if this could include students volunteering with a nonprofit dealing with a particular issue in the community. Absolutely, 100%. Um, if you're volunteering with that nonprofit and you're getting involved and they get an understanding of the work that is being done, I think that, that that's huge. You know, um, it could evolve. I mean, 
when I would talk with my AVID students, I used to be an AVID teacher a long time ago, and we would talk about the difference between community service and community building. You know, every kid needed 10 hours of community service. We required that. But we got into real conversations around, well, what does this community need? See a need, fill a need, you know? Um, uh, not to talk trash about the town that I live in, but I live in the town of Upland. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of, home we have a huge homeless population. I don't know how huge it is, but it's huge enough that every time I go to McDonald's, which is more often than I care to admit publicly, because uh, it's about a thousand yards from my house, there is somebody out there who's asking for food. And I, you know, what Upland did to solve this problem was to post signs all over the community saying, please don't feed the homeless. That doesn't solve the problem. Homelessness is still an issue within our community. And now all of a sudden we've spent a bunch of money on signs. Why don't we engage in community building and talk about ways that we can bring food and, and shelter and, and help this thing out? We talked about how we might be able to do that and your students are, could generate great ideas as to how that could happen and facilitate that. Anyway, um, so be, then being able to reflect on these ideas, you know, um, that reflection can look in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be uh, a written reflection. It could be a video reflection. It could take the form of um, um, a capstone project. It could take this, uh, the, the form of a civic engagement lesson or a civic showcase evening where kids are able to come up and talk about the activities that they have participated in, the skills that they have learned and the things that they have grown the next steps for their projects, how it can continue and how that work can continue on even though they have com completed that work. So uh, it could be in a slideshow, it could be in a speech, a multimedia presentation, digital video, whatever. You know, the more opportunities that we give our students, the more they'll be able to latch on. You know? the, more, the more entry points they have. So criteria five, is exhibit character traits that reflect civic mindedness and a commitment to positively impact the classroom, school, community, and or society. Personally, this is the one that I had the biggest hang up with because exhibit character traits is very subjective. And I know that Johnny is not gonna get a state seal of civic engagement because I don't like Johnny and I'm on that board and I'm gonna say that Johnny did not exhibit character traits because I saw him behave, misbehave one time in my class or he was a pain in my butt. And so really trying to come up with some things that are concrete about this. And I talked with Huling Lee, who was on the committee that worked this. And she's a member of a group who I'm, whose name I'm going to make fun of here in a little bit because it is a beautiful acronym that got shortened to another different acronym. Um, but their, their, their intent or the intent of this criteria was that somebody who's not the student's mother, father, parental figure, cousin, aunt, um, demonstrate that this person has engaged civically. You know, whether that be like a letter of recommendation or a, uh, a check sheet that talks about that or an evaluation form from the, from the interest group or organization that they worked with. Um, and they talk about some of that within all of this wording here. So that the student has a concern for the rights and well-beings of all, has a sense of civic duty, the power to change things for the better and demonstrating empathy. And the reason why I, I go back to my example about not liking Johnny and not wanting to award him a state seal is that we've all at times have been non-empathetic. We have all at times engaged in destructive behaviors and been rude and condescending. We could have all been better. You know, I'm always trying to get better and I'm always trying to say the right thing, but sometimes I don't, you know, and I talk a lot. So I often trip over my words or say the wrong thing or say something unintentionally, you know, or I call someone the veteran of the group, which is a nice way of saying that they're old. And that's, that gets me into trouble, even though I got gray hair in my beard, you know, like it's just the way things are. We all make those mistakes, but those mistakes don't define who we are and we shouldn't make them define who our students are. So um, in here, I talk about letters of, rec or it mentions letters of recommendation, like I said, or a template or an endorsement form that is translated into multiple languages um, so that multiple groups can go ahead and have access to that. Uh, all right. So, sorry. So now what I'm going to do, well, 
So now we're going to get into uh, the resources for examining all of this criteria and really getting an opportunity to kind of dig deep into this. And before we do that, I just want to make sure that I, that I hammer it home. Like I haven't beat, like I'm beating a dead horse and that's fine. I'd rather beat a dead horse than have somebody miss the point. And that's accessibility to all, to all of our students. You know, um, that doesn't mean every kid gets it. We're not handing out participation trophies here, but we want to make sure that they have access to be able to engage in this work. And I believe what we'll find is, is if we give them an avenue, we show them how to use their voice, that our kids are going to do that. And they're gonna do it in ways that surprise us and inspire us. All right, it says Andrea, Adriana raised her hand. Go ahead and unmute and say what you gotta say, girl. Speak your truth. Hey, <laughs> love it. So question that I'm thinking, so I'm familiar with the state seal of biliteracy. And mm -hmm. then, you know, a few years ago, and, and Grecia is, uh, one, I think, the secretary that handles all of the um, Riverside County seal of multiliteracy. Yep. And for both of those seals, it's very specific what the students need to have done or produced or exams that they needed to have passed to receive that seal. And then on our end, on the site, well, actually our district compiles, I don't know, they do their little query. And at the district, they let us know these students did either X, Y, or Z thing. And these students have qualified for this, either the state seal of biliteracy and or this, the Riverside County seal of multiliteracy. And we get a list of those students. And then at the site, we host, you know, a nice little recognition for them. And then they do actually get a seal like I tell my students it's a really cool sticker um, on their transcript and on their diploma. And it's something that they can put on future resumes, on future um, job applications. My question here, though, is uh, I love the accessibility and all of the ways students can, um, can, I guess, qualify for this. But who... <laughs> is going to keep track of all of these different things, of all of the things that the kids could do to um, qualify for this. Cause it sounds like it's no longer like a really easy query that the district, for example, at our district Valverde could do. It looks like something that, especially if this is something that's being accumulated from year to year to year. Well, this teacher in this course, they did this project. And then in this other year with this other teacher, they did like, who's keeping track of that um, is my question on how we're gonna make sure that these kids receive the seal because for the seal of biliteracy, you know, for bilingual students, it's like they got a three or above on an AP exam and or they have above a 3.5 GPA and or like it's, it's things that we could query, but the things that, your listing here are not things not. that we can easily query. So how the heck are we gonna recognize these students? How are we keeping track of all of these things that they're doing is, is my question. I love it. I just don't know how we're gonna easily query when we're talking about a senior class of um, you know, 500 students and we have to keep track of what they've done in the last four years of high school. And then if this also includes things that have done in middle school and elementary, where is- so I'm going to I'm going to reject the premise of your question only because you said, how are we going to easily do this? And the answer is you're not going to easily do this. This is not something that gets done overnight. When I when we first started, and I asked who was in the room and I was excited that there was a middle school person, that there was an elementary person, that there were site administrators and district administrators. I was because this is not Adriana's job. It's not going to fall to one teacher. It can't fall to one individual. It is going to have to be a collaborative effort within your district. It's going to have to be a team effort. There are going to have to be multiple point people who can go ahead and work this out. You're going to have, I mean, I've already raised a ton of questions here and not provided a single answer, I don't feel like. Um, and I don't have, I, you know, and when you come up with answers, I will have more questions for you. Um, you know, and I and I see myself in that role as the question asker. So the way you can answer those questions as to what's best for your community, what's best for your school, how is it that you're going to work those things in there? Who is going to take on which part of that responsibility? Now, some of this stuff could be queryable. You know, if you make a GPA requirement, that's something you can query, right? 
And but then it, it becomes up to, you know, the school to determine how are we going to deliver this message out to students? How are we going to deliver it out through our English classes? Are we going to deliver it out through our history classes? Is it going to be something that we're school wide involved in? Are we all in on civics? Are we all in on whatever it is that we're talking about? And if we are all in, what does all in look like? What does that mean for us? What does it mean for our students to be civically engaged? And I think that those conversations, those are deep conversations and they're not something that's going to get answered in an hour and 15 minute webinar. They're just not, you know? Um, so I reject the premise about it being easy. I don't, I hope you understand now why this is, there's a need for a team, which is why I'm telling you to hang on to the end because I'm, um, you know, um, shout out, we're going to, we're going to offer a summer Institute where we're inviting people to bring teams so that we can help work with this so that we can do more than just sit here and listen to Don talk for an hour. You know, um, that being said, so there's about four different resources. I'm going to drop into the chat right now to look at just the individual criteria. One of them is kind of a check sheet that I kind of developed that will work at the criteria so that you can kind of see different ways that you might be able to move through that and, and putting it at all together as like individual pieces. And you can kind of figure out who might do those things in different roles. Uh, the CDE put together some slides about considerations for each of the individual criteria. Um, and then um, uh, this toolkit, I can't remember off the top of my head who put it together but it was done by region six and it's a really great toolkit that talks about what that could look like K-12. Um, and it's something that they had put together. Um, and then the Upland High School, um, I work, I used to work over at Upland High School. They had a service learning project before all of this came together. I'm, I spent a lot of time meeting with the people to talk about like, how did that come about? What did they do? And they met in teams and they talked about what it was gonna look like. And, and, and so that gives you an opportunity to take a look at that. There's also OUSD has a capstone project, which is Oakland, uh, cause they're really big into civic engagement up there. And those will give you some ideas as to what that could look like and different things to kind of entertain. Now, with all that being said, Grace has dropped those links in the chat, as well as some questions to consider. I want to throw you into breakout rooms for about 15 minutes. They're going to be randomly assigned, which I think is meant to be a good thing in that you can sit there and, and meet some different people, bounce some different ideas off of, kind of get, get a gauge of who else needs to be brought into this fold and brought into this conversation from your own site, from your own district, um, and what that could look like for you. I have a question. Um, so I'm understanding that um, they would get a seal depending on the criteria that we come up with. Uh, as I was saying, at my school is a K-6. All the, the, the middle schools at my district are K-6. Okay. And then uh, if middle school, if we had a partner in middle school and they came up with their uh, criteria, the student could then get a seal again from middle school and so on, high school. So so what's important here, this is where the weird distinction comes into place. The state seal of civic engagement will only be awarded to students in grades 11 or 12. So at your local district or at your local school, you could develop your own criteria for like a local award. And the hope is that your middle schools and elementary schools, your middle schools will work with your high schools around the criteria that they develop so that it's a, a continuum and uh, a part of that conversation. And then that gets staggered at the middle school and then also staggered down to the elementary level um, so that you're hopefully developing, uh, I guess, like an all in civics kind of plan. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, Somebody just said in the breakout room that they had the best person ever. So that's awesome. I think we got everybody back yet. I'm really glad. I, to be perfectly honest with you, um, I would love to hear any kind of feedback that you guys had on the resources that you've had made available to you, particularly on supports that you're going to need, like things that you think that like, so we had a great conversation around this, like, but what we need is because that's where that's where I see myself. I'm the guy who gets you the things that you need, you know, or I'm the guy who figures out how to get you the things that you need or can engage with you about that or can at least start to develop that. That's my job, right? Um, 
one of the things like for today, we dumped more resources, like I said, than you can shake a stick at. But what is it that you still need based on the conversations that you've had? Um, you know, you can either drop that in the chat, feel free to unmute. Um, I would love to hear that because that's really going to inform my next steps in terms of what we do. Adriana, go ahead and talk. <laughs> um, I had a question and I, I, sorry, I have not gone through the plethora, I, but I did create a bookmark bar of just all the resources that um, Ms. Alani shared. So thank you. But what, um, what's the carrot? Like what, if I'm a high school student, what is the incentive for me to jump through all these hoops and do the five criteria? Like what do I get out of it? Or historically, what have students been able to do or achieve or get? after having received the seal. Like, that's great, you got the seal, really cool sticker in your transcript, so what? So the carrot is intrinsic. What happens, what we see and what has historically shown and what the research demonstrates is that when kids are civically engaged, when they, when they understand that, they learn the power that they have, that the fact that they can be change agents, they become those change agents and they become active. Uh, rather, they understand that they can have an active role in their education and an active role in their communities, and it doesn't have to be passive. That you know, their life isn't happening to them, but they are in control of a lot more than what they than what they think about. You know, and I think as a society, what we get is um, not riots in the streets when yet another civil and civilly unrest thing happens because we are working within our communities to make the changes that needed to be made that have been talked about in, in dark corners or at bars, but not active, actively acted upon, you know? Um, so, um, but you get, that's what you get. Um, let's see. Is there, is there, I'm sorry, I, I wanna add to that a little bit. Um, sure. Hi Don um, and everyone else. I, I kind of, you know, um, I want to echo and just kind of ask the question that Ms. Vargas said, but, but maybe also consider a possible solution at the, you know, countywide. Um, for example, our kids get a, the, the seal of multiliteracy, and what we would like to see more is those students getting hired without taking these tests that require, um, you know, the, the, the Spanish test or whatever test that they, that that require that if you have a seal multiliteracy, then that should bypass any type of, of test at the district, like where we can hire those students back as teachers, as classified employees, um, without having to go through extra hoops. But I think with the seal of civic engagement, I think if the idea is to have, I, I totally understand on like the whole idea of intrinsic motivation. I, 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 I love that. I think that there's value to that and there should continue to be value. Um, but I think that our students, um, as you know, they're young adults, you know, and transitioning to college. And so they probably still would like that external motivation. It would be nice and valuable if as a county, we would make some commitments to our students that get a seal of civic engagement that maybe, I, I, I don't know, I'm just gonna throw an idea out there. Like we work with a lot, like a list of businesses um, that since we're taking care of our communities, that list of businesses get some type of, of, of discount for a student that has that seal. Um, I don't know, they put it somewhere in their driver. I don't know, I'm just thinking, right? Like I, it would be nice to come up with an external incentive um, in addition to that internal um, motivation as well. Just some thought for, for our team to brainstorm in the future. So I agree with you wholeheartedly, Dr. Arce. Um, one of the things that, that we have seen in, in places that work with their students is that a lot of those students who um, engage civically with those organizations, they stay on through internships and then get hired on um, because the, whatever it is that they're working with, they wind up becoming a lot of passion projects for those students. Not all, but some. And so when that happens, they get those things in terms of letters of recommendation, in terms of uh, internship availability, and in terms of placement and things like that at the at the higher level, you know. And if you're working 
you know, at the elementary and middle school level, or even at the local level, when you're working to change a law or you're working to, uh, to change something, the manifestation, the manifestation of that change um, also becomes uh, apparent, you know, the, the power that they recognize that they have. But um, I think what you'll discover as we reach out and continue to work within our communities and our organizations is that people are being, I think people would be willing to, to work with stuff like that, you know, and be willing to make those kind of partnerships because they recognize that uh, the work that a student is doing in order to get something like that. So, uh, anybody else concerns or issues or things that they saw or share outs that they want to have? Sorry, I have another question, um, sure. or it's it's maybe a suggestion more than is a question that you talk about your role in this. If perhaps the county could have um, meetings, not you're really good at having meetings for the teachers, but as we go through this, having meetings for or gatherings that the students can come together um, as they start participating in these different organizations, because it could be that, you know, one group is working with the, the Veterans Association here in, in Riverside and somebody else is working with it in, you know, Lake Elsinore, which was the people I was talking to. Um, and so those kids can talk to each other and, and communicate with each other. Is there a way that the county can do something like that? So we could, but to be perfectly honest with you, there's an organization that's already doing that work. Um, uh, and I'm gonna give you access to them. They're Gen Up. Grace is gonna drop a link to them in the chat. Hopefully she can find that on the quick. But Gen Up is a student advocacy organization that does kind of work like that already, where they're working within their communities. Now, granted, those that particular organization is a student advocacy organization. So they're advocating for their students. And uh, they've actually been very active in RUSD's implementation of yes. this civic engagement. Um, yes. And so I think that that would be a great place to begin that work uh, and to work with them to find out where they're at and where they're being active. And I, you know, I think that as this grows, what our hope is, is, you know, I've always seen my job here at the county is not uh, to like stand around and be like, I know more than everybody, but it's really to connect dots or pieces and be like, oh, that's a great idea. I know somebody who's doing that over there. And so I think that as this kind of develops, I think that that's something that we could very easily um, start working together to continue to um, make let more transparent in terms of the connections that can be made and the things that are being done. So I, right. that's a great suggestion. Yeah, I was just thinking of it in terms, because it means something to kids when it's, you're going, that it's organized by the Riverside County Office sure. of Education. You okay. know, um, it just kids, kids love, I know I've had students that have presented to the county board and you could peel them off the ceiling. Right. Um, and they weren't kids that you expected to be that way. But yeah. you want to hear what I have to say. So that was my thought. Okay, thank you. So some things that our districts want to be aware of, our district personnel, our site administrators and stuff, is that the real requirement here is to draft a board resolution so that way you have something uh, that supports the civic engagement, whatever that winds up having to be. So our USD has just made a board resolution. Monterey County has. LACO has a sample board resolution. You can pull from any one of those three or all three of them to create your own or to, to, to begin to massage that language as to what that's going to look like. Um, ordering seals is sim super simple. You'll designate someone at the district to, uh, to order them. The, uh, the state uh, CDE says that you need to allow four weeks before you need them, um, before the ordering. And there's absolutely no cost to ordering seals. So um, that is free. Um, one um, one of the things that kind of got discussed, and so we're we're working on this, and so we're not really sure where everything's going to shake out. But basically, if a district does not adopt the seal of civic engagement, the county can offer it to schools that that are going that are not offering it. 
And so we are not in the business of stepping on toes and we are certainly not going to do that, but we certainly want to also make this available to as many students uh, and afford them those opportunities. So that might be something that we see get developed here, depending upon where our districts are and what comes and goes with, with that. Um, that's more of an aside and uh, not meant to scare anybody or, or anything. Hey, on his little one. <laughs> All right, so some additional resources grace is about to drop a ton of stuff in the chat <laughs> i have been practicing all day trying to say this this is going to be my favorite thing so they have a civic this this organization has a civic engagement roadmap which is actually really quite cool but this is probably the best piece of education is i've seen in quite a few days the Authentic Preparation Today, formerly the Promoting Authentic College Career and Civic Readiness Assessment Civic Engagement Roadmap. Now tell me the APT PACRAS Civic Engagement or CE Roadmap would not be the coolest acronym you've ever heard. Um, they, um, that's the, the organization that Healing Lee was a part of that really kind of helped develop some of this stuff. Um, that Civic Engagement Roadmap is really cool. It's a great infographic type thing. Um, that districts and sites can use to kind of see where they want to go. Our USD Civics, I mentioned, I've been working with, uh, with Carolyn and a couple of uh, uh, the people there have been sitting in on meetings. And they've been doing a fantastic job of navigating this process. They have a ton of resources. Um, when, so you see the programming to offer a local state seal of civic engagement. When you were in your breakout room, you had access to the slides that dealt specifically with the criteria. There's a whole PowerPoint, that slide or this slide or the link that Grace dropped in about that has all of that information. Poway Unified also has uh, civic stuff. The, the, the toolkit that I, I mentioned, um, that is the entire toolkit and as well as a region six civic engagement site with several of these resources already identified, but that, that in-depth information there. Gen Up, which I've already talked about, is a student rights organization, a uh, student advocacy organization, entirely run by students, which is, uh, I think, fantastic and dynamite. So these are all more things to take a look at when you've got a free minute, because I know you have so much free time as educators gearing up for the end. <laughs> um, but wait, there's more! <laughs> all right, so that's my Billy Mays reference for the day. Uh, I, hopefully I did him justice. Uh, <laughs> Rest in peace. There is this flyer that Grace is dropping a link to the chat talking about the, Cal, uh, the Summer Institute for the California State Seal of Civic Engagement. Um, you know, when I got, when this came out, I was super excited about it. Like I said, I believe that civics is the answer. I think that this is the answer to a lot of the questions and problems that are plaguing us within our schools, within our districts, within our communities, because it's empowering. Um, and so I got on this really early and I started talking to people and I was like, oh, are you guys doing anything? And people were like, ah, oh. and then the state was like, well, we're really, we kind of released our stuff. This is where we're at. We're, we're going to be moving in a different direction. Speaking of the different direction, as I divert my attention for a second, one of the big things that I forgot to mention earlier and that bears mentioning now, especially to my district office people I cite administrator people is that one avenue that the state has kind of veered away from and that APT is working towards and and now the state is wor working in this direction is making the state seal of civic engagement a piece of the college and career readiness indicator. This is a, a conversation that is happening um, as we speak at the state. I think I forgot to give that link to Grace to drop into the chat, but I can find that if you're interested, just message me and I will be sure to send that over. There's like a big old two page memo about it, but it is definitely something that we may see in the next few years. Um, that's the eval. Thank you guys so much for your time. I definitely don't wanna uh, hold you up any longer than I already have. Um, thank you so much. If you've